Hello, my name is Matt Ravenscroft. I'm a shoulder surgeon from Manchester in the United Kingdom. And I'm going to be talking today about bursal acromion reconstruction, which is a new option I have for treating massive irreparable cuff tears in the elderly population whilst preserving their joint. So the other options for irreparable cuff tears are debridement, partial repair, biceps anatomy, tendon transfers, of course the superior capture reconstruction. I also occasionally will uh, ablate the suprascapular nerve for pain relief and there's reverse arthroplasty. But the new one is bursal acromion reconstruction for me. So SCR has solved the problem for the correct patient population. So we've looked at it and we've figured that for the younger patient, less than 75, compensated rotator cuff repair without comorbidities, it's a very good option. I looked at my results for superior capture reconstruction, over 70 to date, and I MRI scan everybody at three months and most at six months. And I did find that even though the patients are doing very, very well on the MRI scan, occasionally I had some failures on the medial side. I looked at my technique. So my initial technique, I did eight cases and three of them failed on the medial side. So they pulled off from the glenoid, but they were still doing well. So that gave me a 37.5% failure rate. So I improved my medial fixation and that dropped again. And then I added the internal brace. And now that's gone down to a failure rate on the medial side of 1.7%. Overall, even taking into account those radiological failures, the patients did very well with very good improvement in ultra shoulder score, starting with 17 out of 48, 48 is normal shoulder, going up to 31 at six months. And on the ultra shoulder score, a change in six is significant. And their range of movement also improved statistically. So looking back at those cases where I had a failure radiologically on the medial side, you can see this scan you can see the graft nicely fixed onto the humeral side, but it's come off the glenoid side. This patient was delighted. This patient is patient number one. So pre-op shoulder score of 12 out of 48, and at six months, 45 out of 48. Almost a normal shoulder, but the graft has come off the glenoid side. So it's preventing humeral acromial contact, which is where the pain comes from, I believe. When I removed one of my superior capsules, because this was a acellular dermal matrix, and I was very encouraged to find that this patient, I removed the graft, it was well fixed onto the humeral side, but again, it came come off the glenoid side. We then did histology on it, and the acellular dermal matrix at nine months was completely full of cells. And we've submitted this now for publication. So moving on, I had those patients who were doing very well, following an SCR, even though it had come off the glenoid side. So then I kind of was thinking, if we fix the same graft on the acromion, so we'll be reconstructing the bursa under the acromion using the thick artiflex, will we get the same result? So I came up with a technique which fixes the graft under the acromion as a permanent option for these patients. And the configuration I use with cross suture tapes, I then tie them over the top of the acromion so the graft is sort of slung and wrapped around the acromion and you have this permanent barrier to stop the humeral head contacting the acromion and giving the patients pain. But this is in the more elderly population. So my results. I've done 35 to date with minimum of three month follow-up, maximum 16 month follow-up. I scan every patient at three months and most have had a scan at six months. It's this elderly population. I say it's a different population to my SCRs. My SCRs are the under 75. My BARs are late 70s, early 80s. Visual analog score preoperatively 8.5 to six months going down to 1.9. And 1.9 is not no pain, but it's a very manageable level of pain compared to 8.5. And with the Oxford shoulder score, we had an increase from 23 preoperatively up to 35 at six months. A change in six on this scoring system is statistically significant. So this is a patient, a typical patient, 82 year old male, likes playing golf, you can see on his MRI scan at three months, the artiflex graft on the undersurface of the acromion, but you can see there's still a fluid line between the graft and the acromion. But at six months, that's gone. The graft is healing to the acromion. And you can see his range of movement is well preserved. It's his left shoulder. It's not perfect, but he has no pain. He's back playing golf, back enjoying life. At one year, I have also seen on cases that the graft appears to be getting thicker. In this case, it's acting like a meniscus. Form is following function. 
Of course, we can't talk about results unless we talk about complications. I've had one patient who was doing very well. At nine months, she felt something go. I looked inside the shoulder and one of my knots had failed and it was protruding on the undersurface of the chromium and I think may have been causing her pain. I removed this. I've had no infections. I had one patient who preoperatively her score was 9 out of 10, so a lot of pain. At three months, it was still 9 out of 10. And I realised when I asked her, she had pain and she was tender to touch over the acromion. But six months, that was gone. So back in the UK, for this elderly population with massive irreparable cuff tear, I used to use the in-space balloon. When I looked at my results of this, over 30 cases, I had 21% complication rate, a third revision to reverse, and overall half the patients were unhappy. They returned to their pre-op level of symptoms. And what we did notice that after about six to eight weeks, a lot of patients had sudden deterioration in their symptoms as the balloon disintegrates. So it's a temporary fix, it's not a permanent fix. So then I had to think about a better, more permanent option for this patient group, which is where bursts of the chromium reconstruction came. So this is a video of an 82-year-old lady who is nine months following a balloon. Initially she did well, but at six weeks her pain deteriorated as the balloon disintegrated. And on second look, you can see the debris of the PLA in the synovium. I revised this lady to a BAR. She was doing well at three months, better at six months, and even better still at one year. So I gave her a permanent solution for her problem rather than the temporary solution. So this is my decision-making process now. I use the SCR for the younger patient group and they do very well. For that elderly population, I now use the bursal chromium reconstruction. And in my hands, they're now also doing very well. But if there's severe arthritis or pseudoparalysis in that elderly group, I have a very good option, which is the reverse. So now I have an option for the younger age group irreparable cuff tear, the older age group irreparable cuff tear, who we're trying to preserve their joint, but I also have a very good option for the degenerate and the pseudoparalyzed joint in the elderly, which is the reverse.